In this episode, we talk about a tip so that you can find your passion in engineering, how you can have balance in your life, and one book tip for engineers. All that, coming up. Hey, 1% Nation, I'm Jake Voorhees, and you are watching The 1% Engineer Show, where we empower young engineers to rise to the top 1% of their career. If this is your first time here, guys, make sure you subscribe because I release videos two times a week for engineering success. If you want the 1% Engineer Kit and access to the Facebook groups, follow the links below. I do interviews for TEDx Wilmington speakers, and in this episode, we're featuring the time when I sat down with Corey Budashak, who's a PhD electrical engineer from the University of Delaware. He is the energy Technologies Department Chair at Delaware Tech. So without further ado, guys, let's jump right into this quick interview with Corey Budashak. Enjoy! During my undergraduate degree at the University of Delaware, I had a passion in, for engineering and math, but I didn't really know what my focus was going to be. And I started doing group tutoring sessions for calculus. And that was one of the things that opened my eyes as to that I could make a real difference in the lives of other, other students and really help them understand and, and share my passion. So. Um, you know, some, sometimes my group tutoring sessions would start with three or four people, but they would quickly grow to 20 or 30 as it spread. And, and I would hold these sessions once a week, and it was really great to be able to share my passion of math and learning with uh, other students. So I also started to take more courses of interest, elective courses further throughout my bachelor's degree, and I was lucky enough to take a, a solar power course my junior year. and. Um, I was also able to do solar power research that summer with the same professor, and that's what really got my love of energy going. And so I continued on at grad school at University of Delaware and went right for my PhD. The nice part about it is that my funding mechanism wasn't tied to a particular project, it was very broad, and so I was really able to go with my research interests. And one thing I was really good at was computer programming, so I started writing computer programming to figure out, okay, what would our electricity grid look like and how much would it cost if we had just wind and solar and we had loads of it. So we looked at different scenarios from 30% to 100%. And what we found was that, yeah, you could get by with putting large scale batteries in warehouses. However, that would not be cost effective at all. And another mechanism we looked at was doing centralized hydrogen storage and that would be a little bit more expensive than today, but not too much. But really what we found to be really cost effective was that if we had a large electric vehicle fleet, you could figure out a way to charge and discharge these very smartly, so send power onto the grid and take it off at smart times, and that would balance out the variability of these large wind and solar systems. And so I really wanted to take both these passions in to after my PhD was over into my career. And as luck would have it, a position opened up down the road. One of the big things that, that I struggled with was that I could have went to a postdoc or could have went to a different research university to, to try to become a professor, but I knew my first passion was teaching. So what I decided to do was try to find a job where teaching mattered most and where research was just sort of a side quest that I could take. So um, luckily, Delaware Tech was that institution. It's not a research institution, it's a community college. It serves mostly local Delawareans. And they were just getting the energy management program and the renewable energy solar program off the ground. And I was able to get in the ground floor of that and really build the program as I see fit. And um, it's just been a great success. And, and the only thing we need now is more students. Our graduates are really successful. and. Um, some of them have told me they make more money than me as an associate degree student. Um, while that's you know, disheartening to some extent, it's really heartening to see that I'm making a real difference and, and having a real impact on students' lives. One student just told me that um, she just had a, a baby a couple months ago and she told me that she didn't think she'd ever have a chance to have maternity leave, but now she has a job that gives her maternity leave because of the impact I made in her life and that's the powerful things that happen. That's so great. So what is maybe one takeaway in terms of how you've been very motivated to push yourself in terms of your professional and your career development and you, you knew that you didn't want to be in academic research because that's kind of can be a whole can of worms that's different from your ability to, to impact students. But maybe what's, what's one, one takeaway for um, either your productivity or motivation, your drive or ways that 
some, like maybe one thing that you live by that makes you always, you know, onward and upward. Right. So I think what I would say is that the most important thing that I've learned, and this is actually, I have, uh, both my parents are one of nine, so I have lots of cousins and most of them are younger than me. And I write them a little note on their high school graduation day and um, is that they, you need to have balance in your life. And you not only need to have balance in your career, but you need to make sure that you have a life outside of your career, outside your school studies and things like that. And I think trying to keep that balance is never going to be perfect, but trying to keep that balance is the way that keeps me motivated to, to do more and to be more productive at work. If I, if I worked all weekend, I wouldn't you know, get up Monday morning and just be like, yeah, I'm going to do something awesome today. But if I get refreshed and I spend time with my family or you know, go play volleyball on the weekend or something like that. It just, it refreshes me and keeping that balance, I think is really, really important. Yeah, that's one thing that's talked about a lot, especially for people who are go, 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 and they're really into what they're doing in their careers and they are having that good impact. Because most people just strive for that alone. They want right. the ability to talk about how you're talking with these students. Um, but balance is so key because if you can't be healthy, the sleep, the exercise, eating right, and spend time with your family, a lot of times it's family first mm -hmm. and everything else, then you can't do this other stuff anyways, right? So yeah. it all becomes in disarray. So if you could recommend one book, it doesn't necessarily have to be to engineering professionals, but for young people or students in college or just coming out or in grad school or whatever, you could recommend one book. So I think one of the books that really broadened my horizon is, is the book Natural Capitalism. And why I really like natural capitalism is it really made me question the underlying assumptions behind um, capitalism, behind all the assumptions we make. So to give you an example, one of the assumptions of capitalism is that we have perfect information. Well, no one has perfect information. Another assumption is that we have no transaction costs when we do anything. Well, there's always a transaction cost. If you get a gallon of milk, you're losing time by going to get a gallon of milk. So um, but the other thing is that there's no external costs either. So, you know, again, the natural sort of part of natural capitalism is talking about how, especially energy use, we are dumping all this sorts of pollution that's having health effects and other effects on all sorts of other people, but that cost isn't counted at the pump or at the wellhead or at the, um, you know, power meter. So it's all those sorts of things that really opened my eyes into thinking differently and the one sort of key takeaway that I, that I think about is to try to limit those sort of you know, pitfalls of capitalism is to try to tax consumption instead of income because consumption is the main driver behind a lot of those ill effects and it, and it serves as a corrective mechanism. But at the same time, you have to realize that um, if you're taxing consumption, that may be very regressive on the people that you know, need to, to have um, you know, just the bare minimum to survive. So to counteract that is to, to make a pr very progressive subsidy to lower income folks as, a, as sort of like the earned income tax credit. Hey, 1% Nation, I hope you enjoyed that short interview with Corey Budishak. If you did, consider subscribing because I release videos two times a week for engineering success. Comment below if you have a question for Corey. And as always, guys, thanks for watching the 1% Engineer Show and stay hungry on your quest to become a 1% Engineer. Cheers!